Hello and welcome back to Global with John Sokol. Coming up in the next half hour. This year we begin centenary commemorations for the outbreak of World War I. But the way that soldiers were treated and what happened on the battlefield is still creating conflict between the left and the right here in the UK. Well, to get to the bottom of the debate, I'll be joined from Oxford by Professor Gary Sheffield from the Western Front Association. And we'll get the German perspective from Barbara Wiesel, who's the London correspondent for the German public broadcaster ARD. Now, there is a dispute over the origins of the quote, but its meaning couldn't be clearer. The million-plus British soldiers who died during World War I were lions led by donkeys. Indeed, it's the popular perception of the war to end all wars. Brave young men sent to their wholesale slaughter, fighting over a patch of Belgian mud by commanders a very safe distance back from the gas and the shells and the trenches. But in this year, the 100th anniversary of its outbreak, there is also debate over how the war should be remembered. The British Education Secretary has accused left-wing academics of using popular TV shows like Blackadder to feed myths about World War I. Well, one of the show stars, Sir Tony Robinson, has hit back saying his comments are silly and that Blackadder is just one of many teaching tools. So, how should we remember the Great War? Well, Professor Gary Sheffield is Vice President of the Western Front Association and has published many books about World War I and Barbara Wiesel is London correspondent for the German public broadcaster ARD. And both of you, thank you very much indeed uh, for being with us. Uh, Gary, let me come to you first of all. Uh, are you surprised that there's been an outbreak of hostilities uh, in this, the 100th anniversary, over the virtues or otherwise of that terrible war? Not really, because we've been arguing this sort of thing really since the war ended. And there has been a great deal of um, revisionist study of the war, particularly over the last 40 years. And many of the uh, ideas being put forward, for example, by, by Michael Gove, they have become part of the academic mainstream. Where, so, I differ, where I differ from him, however, it is simply not a left-right split. I personally am politically on the left, and yet, as a historian, my views have led me to a very different version of the First World War. My study, I should say, has led me to a very different version of the First World War from the Blackadder point of view. Right, so, so what is your view of World War I? Well, from the British point of view, it was a war that was fought basically to combat the aggression of the Central Powers, principally Germany and Austria-Hungary, and in many ways, it was a precursor to the Second World War. That was certainly how it was regarded by the people of Britain at the time. Now, I'm not saying for one moment that Imperial Germany was anywhere near as bad as the Nazi regime, but it was bad enough. So the First World War was one of the wars that Britain fought, really, for the basics of national security. Yeah, so, so this kind of portrayal of the war as, from the British side, of a bunch of buffoons very rich people, the kind of ruling class, locked into a kind of way, a Victorian way of life that was eroding, sending all these young men to their deaths, needlessly, is a, force port a false portrayal. Well, of course it is. I mean, the war was a needless war in the sense it did not have happened, but it happened because of, because of the aggression of Austria, Hungary and Germany. And Britain and its allies really had no option but to oppose it. And Anybody who knows anything at all, uh, seriously, about the British Army of the First World War will recognise the picture you've painted as being a complete caricature. And if I could just correct you, you said at the beginning, I think, that one million-plus British soldiers died in the war. In fact, it was under one million from across the entire British Empire. That's a terrible enough figure, but there's no need to exaggerate it. OK. Uh, Barbara Wiesel, I mean, is there the same debate taking place in Germany, are there the same commemorations taking place? No, not at all. Not at all? Not at all. It's a very different perception because for Germans, or Germany as in general, the, the First World War is like the prelude to the Second World War. It is like the, the younger brother to the big terror that came then. For Germany, the, the 20th century is dominated by the horrors of the Second World War, by the discussion of German guilt with regard to the war and with regard to the Holocaust, which is so overwhelming that discussion and um, his historical exploration of the First World War was sort of, um, it was rather overwhelmed by, by World War II. So it's totally different, and nobody would ever dream of calling it the Great War. Uh, 
I always have to explain to our listeners, why do British people do that? Why is it so different? Why is perception so different? And the German perspective is very different in that sense. So I think at the moment, this debate in Britain would, uh, you know, it comes, it, it brings a certain astonishment. Is, are there commemoration, I mean, you know, in Britain, uh, as you know, living here, that a huge amount is being made of this, the 100th anniversary, the BBC is doing all sorts of special programming, the government is kind of wanting, you know, money to be spent on refurbishing certain museums and all the rest of it. Um, is anything like that happening in Germany? Not in that sense. Of course, there are exhibitions. Where there will be film and German public broadcasting as well. They have filmed the diaries of participants in the First World War, and so on and so forth. In that regard, of course, there are you know, mountains of books being written. There are some books by British, about German historians too. And of course, there's a big debate in newspapers, magazines, and so on. What was it? Why came it about? And yes, who caused it? That debate is also there. But in that sense, um, that of course, Germany can't go and say, there's not, not a discussion really about uh, how guilty were we in causing World War I, because that is mostly uh, focused on, on World War II. And the, I would say, uh, sort of national, nationalistic aspects in this debate in Britain are rather estranging for Germans. I mean, that is something that you would never dare. I mean, we've been very demilitarized, deflagged and dehymned. And you could rather not, you know, say, uh, let's commemorate the war in a feeling of triumph or in a feeling of great sure. deeds. Uh, Gary, let me just come back to you. Isn't it possible that both things that you know, that what, that what you've argued, that it was uh, necessary for Britain to do it, but that there were, uh, you know, lions, uh, donkeys led by lions, both could be true in that, you know, there was the most appalling slaughter over very small patches of mud where maybe, you know, that could have been avoided. Well, for the first point, I'd absolutely agree that we don't want any sort of jingoistic uh, patriotic celebration of the war. What we do need is, is proper commemoration of why the war was fought. And to answer your question directly, well, the war was a particular, fought a particular way because of a set of circumstances pretty well unique to 1914 to 1918, that there was a temporary dominance of the defensive over the offensive on the battlefield. Um, and all armies lost vast numbers of men in actually coming up with the methods which actually broke that deadlock. The British were certainly, by, by no means, had the heaviest casualties. Um, it's one of these awful things that if you fight that sort of war against an army as tough as the, Germ as the German army, if you raise an army, as the British did, pretty well from scratch, uh, a largely citizen army of volunteers and conscripts, and if you have them learning to fight on the job, at the time when a revolution in military affairs is coming in, which basically transforms the way that war is fought at the end of the war, you are going to get a very heavy number of casualties. And the reason why the British think of it as being the Great War is that for a whole set of reasons, principally Britain did not fight uh, in that sort of war at that sort of level for that sort of length of time in the Second World War. British losses were much lower in the Second World War than they were in the First. It's entirely the opposite for the Russians, for the Germans. So I'm not surprised at all that the Germans have a rather different view of the First World War than we do here in Britain. OK, Professor Gary Sheffield and Barbara Wiesel, both of you, fascinating stuff. Thank you very much indeed uh, for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you so much.